Hello and welcome to Cup of Joe. Another week's gone by and I thought I'd sit down for another ramble. It's kind of gonna go off of uh, last week. So last week's video I put up all about the uh, ideas around how dark roast can mess with your ability to taste things. Same with sugar. Seemed to be that resonated with many of you. And there's some other thoughts surrounding that as well. Uh, one of them having to do with strong coffee, the idea of strong coffee. But first, I also last week put up a video on Ladro's Hambella Cariti, uh, which I did on the Kalita Wave. And I remarked that it would probably taste slightly different on the Chemex, or maybe not just slightly, but perhaps significantly. And they also had put on the bag that uh, it was intended, and like Chemex was one of the intended brew methods. So I thought, let's go ahead and do this. Now, I actually have had this uh, on the Chemex since then, but I thought I would just have it again today anyways. And um, what I said in the video on the Hambella with the uh, Kalita Wave, the dominating sort of flavor is like sugar sweetness and then the lime and the melon kind of hide in the background. And with the Chemex, it does bring out a lot more of the lime. It's actually got this like brightness. I mean, it's a, it's a lime-like brightness right up front and uh, there's a lot of sweetness as well. So it's also missing something that Kalita has, but I think that's just, the, the Chemex always tends to give you a little bit of a more brighter cup and it's smoother in a lot of respects, but more like the Kalita is bringing out something else in addition. Although as I'm tasting this, this tastes really good. There's actually a lot of sweetness still in this. This coffee is actually gonna be in the Coffee Lovers box this month which is now available so you can go to the page and order. I'll link below and at the end of the video. Don't have the videos up for that yet, but I will soon, but you can order. Uh, and this will be one of the coffees in the box. I'm calling it uh, Wild Honey because of its incredible level of sweetness and sort of bright bite. It reminds me of honey. Uh, honey is obviously a lot more uh, strong in the sweet department, but so this is actually also a really good coffee. I mean, it, this is why I brought this up last week, because this is um, a light roasted coffee, has a lot of solid, I would call them strong flavors, um, but there's a lot of delicate flavors as well, like the lime and the melon are really, they can be really nuanced and hard to pick out if you, have, if you don't um, drink a lot of coffee like this, uh, if you don't taste a lot of different things as well. But so I, I've been writing an article about the idea of what strong coffee is because it's a concept that seems to s get people stuck. I say get people stuck because I, uh, I don't think most people feel stuck about it. But it's, it's a term in coffee that's thrown around um, as pretty absolute in that if, if, you, if you ask like an average person what they want in coffee, often the answer is, I want it strong. Well, what does that mean? <laughs> And that's, um, that's kind of where the whole exploration started. What, it, what, do you, what do you mean strong coffee? Because a lot of people had different interpretations. And I actually asked on social media, and this is what led into the article, so I asked on social media for people's um, opinions on what strong coffee is to them. And most people's responses were very, very not specific, maybe more pertaining to an emotional state but I broke, uh, I broke the responses down into kind of three categories. There's a category of people who, uh, where strong coffee to them is a relation to the taste of the coffee, the taste and the feel. There's a category of people where the strong coffee is a relation to perhaps its level of caffeine. The third category, which kind of people in one and two fit in as well, is where it's just this sense of the coffee being strong. And that's really, really hard to describe, but people want, a lot of people want a cup of coffee that'll kick them in the pants in the morning. Something along those lines, or you, know, you can stick a spoon in it, or the spoon will stick up in it, or whatever that the expression is. I think that there is certainly a general sense uh, that you can get from a particular coffee, from a particular brand, that'll make you think, ah, oh, this, is, this is strong coffee. Now, before I dive into exploring the meanings of those, there's an actual technical definition of strength in coffee, and it has to do with the amount of solids in, in brewed coffee, the amount of solids that are in the water after you brew. A proper brew strength, the coffee ends up being about one and a half percent coffee and 98 and a half percent water. And increasing the amount of coffee solids that end up in your coffee after brewing, increasing that percentage is increasing the strength vice versa. So the people who are talking about, oh, 
Hello. Sorry, one second. I just had a sudden burst of melon. It's cooling. So um, some flavors come out more when the coffee cools. The lime kind of disappeared and now I taste a lot of melon. Interesting. Hmm. That's cool. Back to what I was saying. So uh, strength in coffee technically is how much coffee solids end up in the coffee after you brew it. So the people who are thinking of coffee in terms, or strength of coffee in terms of taste are probably the closest uh, to, to um, being actually kind of correct. But what I found is most people's interpretation of strength and coffee taste really had to do with probably, at, well, mostly to do with the roast level, but probably a combination of roast level and the actual origin, because a lot of it came down to overwhelmingness of certain flavors and oiliness of coffee. So a French press would come off as a stronger coffee than a Chemex, even if the amount of solids ending up in the brew was the same. So that's where um, some of the interesting confusion comes from. That's also what kind of led me on that track last week of, uh, well, dark coffee can destroy your senses. If, if strength to you is overwhelming, then maybe your calibration is a bit off. But understanding that is, is also helpful because if someone says they want strong coffee and I can figure out that what they really want is um, something dark and roasty, maybe oily, then it's easy to kind of steer in that direction. The caffeine one is also simple. If what you want is, is more caffeine in your coffee, there are a few solutions to that. Number one, you can brew at a technically higher strength. So the more coffee solids that end up with your, in your coffee, you know, the more coffee grounds you're brewing with, the more caffeine you're going to get. Because uh, the caffeine that ends up in your brew is pretty much just about how much roasted coffee, most, how much ground coffee you brew with. So that's, I mean, that's kind of the easiest solution. Of course, when you do that, you're gonna end up with really uh, harsh coffee. The other solution is to use a method like espresso. So um, in a brewed cup of coffee, 12 ounce cup of coffee, I think what you, on sort of on average, this varies greatly from coffee to coffee, so it's not like complete, but it's in the neighborhood of 220 milligrams of caffeine. Whereas in an ounce, shot of espresso is in the neighborhood of 45 milligrams of caffeine. So the idea is in an espresso, um, there's technically less caffeine in one little drink, but there's far more by volume. So if you drink a bunch of espresso, you can get a lot more caffeine faster than you can drinking 12 ounces of uh, brewed coffee. So that's one solution. Uh, the, the final solution, which is where all of the coffee brands that market strong coffee or the strongest coffee where they uh, are taking their approach is to roast coffee that includes uh, blended in Robusta. Uh, now, so the two main consumed, uh, marketed and sold species of coffee are Arabica and Robusta. Arabica is the tasty kind. Um, that's like 70% of the world's production of coffee is, coffee is Arabica. Uh, pretty much everything I drink on this channel is Arabica unless I say otherwise. Um, I actually do have uh, some Robusta from Vietnam that um, I'm gonna do a video on soon. Uh, but most Robusta doesn't taste good, but it has way more caffeine naturally than Arabica. So by weight, um, often Robusta might even have twice as much caffeine as Arabica. So if you you know, if I were to brew the same amount here, I might have I might have 220 milligrams of caffeine in a 12 ounce cup of this with the Arabica, uh, but I might end up with you know 400 or 500 if it's Robusta. So that's the other way to get more caffeine. Uh, but the problem is then the coffee's not really tasting good. So although it's a bit of a sidebar, I have heard that specialty grade Robusta can be quite delicious. The problem is no one's producing it because no one wants it. So I'm a little disappointed. I'm hoping someday uh, to find some really high quality Robusta because in addition, aside from the caffeine differences, uh, and a lot of Robusta taste-wise can end up tasting, uh, either it's roasted really, really dark and it just tastes like ash or um, it can end up with like a rubbery taste or uh, other really negative tastes like that. Um, but Robusta has a lot more oily body to it. It produces like a thicker coffee, which is really intriguing to me. Um, 
and I've heard tell of it being used in older uh, espresso blends where it makes a really interesting cup of espresso. So it'd be nice to be able to try that. The last thing, the whole, whole sense of coffee being strong, um, if you can't pinpoint one of the other two, then it's possible, I guess, that people who want strong coffee just want to feel like their, their coffee is really giving them a lot of, a lot of boost. I mean, it's, it's probably a combination of the two. It's probably an emotional state. Um, you have that first cup of coffee in the morning, you're tired, you have the coffee, and then it really energizes you. That can feel like you're getting a lot of strength from your coffee. And if what you usually drink, uh, or whatever you usually drink in that state is probably what you're gonna start to identify as strong coffee. Um, lots of interesting things going on there. The technically correct answer of strength in coffee just has to do with uh, how much coffee solids end up in your brew. And the easiest way to manipulate that is just use more coffee when you brew or use less. If you want really good tasting coffee, if you want to explore the actual taste of coffee, then there is kind of a f uh, distinct window um, of good extraction, which will give you a good look in the tastes of the coffee. So you can't, you know, if that's your goal, then you can't really play with the strength of the coffee too much uh, without getting out of order. So that's what I have been, well, one of the things I've been thinking about. Anyways, uh, be curious to hear what you think strong coffee is. If you leave your comment below, you know, I'll include you in the little article that I'm putting together and uh, I'll have this video on the page as well. It's always nice to hear everyone's differing points of view on these really interesting ephemeral subjects. So again, this coffee that I'm finishing off now, the Ethiopia Hambella Kiriti by Ladro, will be or is in this month's Coffee Lover's Box. You'll find a link below or on the screen, one side of the screen or another right about now. Just visit there, place your order. I'll have videos up soon. I'll have the videos on YouTube and then they'll be on the page there too. Uh, and you as well can enjoy this really sweet and delicious uh, limey melony coffee. Wild honey, if you will. Cheers.